He says there are possibilidades infinitas. Infinitas. Now listen, I know infinitas because I know just a little bit of Latin and Greek. And possibilidades sure does sound like possibilities to me. And uh, so I rolled with that and I talked to him afterwards and I talked to my professor last night. I said, tell me, what, that's what he was saying, right? He was saying there are infinite possibilities when you're in this position. I said, and I, I, Paulo said, yeah, that's exactly right. And I told him I was going to tell you that today. And he said, oh, that's awesome. Listen, here's the reason I'm telling you that today. In this present moment, we're not just the stuff we're made of. Think of what Dorothy Day said. Think of how Chris's heart and his wife's heart at the new, think of when even when Sebastian was born. And it's like, I got to really dig hard to think back to that purity you know, and the simplicity and the baby smell, right? Because you know, he's a little different now. And uh, he's still cute, but a little different. And uh, think about in, that, in those moments, in the, in the tr let's call them the treasurable moments, the moments where in your mind you say, I don't want to forget this moment. I can't forget this moment. This moment is imprinted upon my heart, dare I say, upon my soul, and I cannot possibly forget this moment. In those moments, it's like we break through the lies we've been told that all we are is the stuff of this body and that all that exists are the things we're supposed to buy and possess. Listen to me. Only a fool thinks that he already doesn't possess everything he needs for life and for eternity if he has Christ. Only a fool thinks that there is anything in this world that can fill the God-shaped hole that he left when he put his fingerprint on every human heart, when each one of us were made Imago Dei. Listen to me. If the God who created everything at the subatomic level, through which I can peer through an electron microscope and see the inherent intrinsic complexity of it, if that God who did that and who also flung the galaxies into being as though they were cat's eye marbles in a child's hand being tossed upon a field. If that God has sent his son into a manger to become a man, to be, to be of human flesh, to live a perfect and sinless life, to ransom us back from death and the grave, if that God knows you by name and can count the number of hairs on your head, then there are, let me say it right, let me say it right, then there are possibilidades infinitas right now in this present moment, listen to me, our age, our culture, I think John Vervecki has it right. We have a mental health crisis because we have a meaning crisis. And in that manger, the answer to all of the longings for hope were realized. To quote Aquinas as I conclude, to one who has faith, no explanation is necessary. To one without faith, no explanation is possible. Matthew 6.33 says, Seek first the kingdom of God, and all these things will be added to you. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 6 says, And without faith, it is impossible to please God, for whoever would draw near to God must first believe that he exists and that he rewards those who diligently seek him. I don't know about you, but I am not content to believe that all I am is the stuff I ate and the chemical processes of the mind. And I don't know about you, but I most certainly have never found more than a moment's satisfaction in anything I've ever owned, tasted, touched, or enjoyed. No. Today I would invite you this Christmas season with a renewed childlike vigor to remember the mystery, the majesty, the beauty of the child who was born in that manger because while I see his light, more importantly, by his light, I can see all other things. Amen.